greetings! Today we're going to have a look at modeling a bike rack in Autodesk Inventor. Behold! What we have here is a staggered bike rack. It's going to be used, uh, made using the frame generator in Autodesk Inventor, and it consists of a bunch of arms with a bunch of cross members that are intended to catch wheels of different sizes. They're staggered so that you can fit them a bit closer together. Now, we're going to take a slightly different approach to modeling this as we did from last week. Um, today, we're going to be creating a sketch, and that's going to be driving most of this model. The sketch that we want to make represents the center line of this frame here. So let's get to it. We'll start off by creating a new standard millimeter part. Wonderful, good. And we'll create the sketch on the XY plane. So what we want to do is reproduce the rough shape, rough shape of the center line of this first frame. So we'll come along here, create a line. And I find it's useful when creating a sketch in Inventor to define the size of the first line. It sets the overall scale of the thing. So we know that the first line there is 280 mil. Now, what we need to do is next produce the line that will represent this arc and tangential line. Now, if you wanted to do it the slow way, you could come along here to arc, and you could throw in an arc and add in a line and then add in your constraints. But we're all about cheating and speed here. So what we'll do is use a shortcut. If you click line and you click and hold, it will make an arc. Then we'll come along here, make a line, and we see that tangential glyph pop up. Um, and click down, and we can repeat the arc. There we go. Make tangential line, click and hold here to make the last arc and bring it down like that. I like to finish it off with a construction line so that it's easy to grab the horizontal. Now, we'll go in here and make sure our constraints are okay. We can see that all the tangential constraints were thrown in perfectly, but we can see that this guy is not set to vertical. So we'll come along here and we'll add in a vertical constraint for that final line. Ooh, looking good. All right, so we know that these arcs happen to all be the same radius. So we'll come along here and add an equals constraint with that arc and that arc and that arc and that arc. Beautiful. Okay, and we'll put in a dimensional constraint, 50 millimeters. So far, so good. So we'll add in a few more dimensions that we happen to know. We want it to be 310 long, looking good. Now, we're going to place down two points and these points are going to represent the cross members that will catch the wheel. But where to put them? So we can start off by putting them roughly in place. We'll put one there and one there. And we might say that this end one is horizontally aligned with the origin point of that circle. Okay, so how do we know where they go? Well, we can define these wherever we want to, but I might go ahead and say that that's 40 millimeters below the origin. But we can see that we can drag this out as far as we want to. So how do we know what size to go for? That depends on the size of the wheels, doesn't it? So what we're going to do is two things. Firstly, we'll draw a construction line between these two for reasons unknown as of yet, but you'll see. Uh, make it a construction and also draw the two wheels that we want to capture. So the smaller wheel is 480 mils in diameter and the larger wheel is 660 mils in diameter. And we'll make them both construction. So what we want to do is we want to use a coincident constraint to connect the edge of those wheels to those two points representing the cross members. Now, this is where the construction line comes into it. As long as that construction line happens to be below the origin point of this wheel, it should capture that tire. So we'll go ahead, we'll put in our first wheel looking pretty good. And we'll do the same with the larger wheel, come along and connect the rim to the two points representing the cross members. Ooh, looking pretty good, pretty good. Okay. so. Clicking and dragging this degree of freedom, we can see that we can make the, the rack smaller or larger. If we make it smaller in this direction, it will capture the small wheel just fine, but it might be a bit unstable for the larger wheel. So we want to bring it the origin as close down to the or to that construction line there as we can, and that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and we'll fix it with the dimension. We'll say that that's 450. Yep and we'll fix an angle. So let's go ahead and say that we want it at 18 degrees and that little arm there to be 18 degrees as well. Looking good, fully constrained, fully constrained is good. Okay, we'll come along here and click finish sketch. Now, we want 
to reproduce the sketch again. So we've got one center point there. We need another center point here, but oh, I don't, I'm lazy and I don't want to redo the whole sketch. That's crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an offset plane and we are going to set it 70 mils from that original sketch. Looking good. Next, we'll come along here, create a 2D sketch and we'll create it on that new work plane. And rather than reproducing the sketch uh, line for line and dimension for dimension, constraint for constraint, we're going to use the awesome project geometry tool. What this does is it goes to the background and it says, hey, you give me your geometry and project it onto this plane. And that's super duper useful for a reason that I will show you very shortly. I'm just going to project each of the points that I care about. Good stuff. Click finish sketch. And you'll see that the lines are in yellow. So the cool thing about projected geometries is if you come here and say sketch one and you were to edit, say the height, we'll change it to say 200. The projected lines will change instantly. Very cool. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to undo that. Wonderful. So we've got our projected lines uh, for our first rack. What we want to do is make a second plane that's 300 mils across and reproduce a similar set of center lines. So as you can see, the design of the second shape is very similar, um, but a little bit shorter, the angle a little bit shallower. So let's go ahead. We'll start off by making a work plane offset 300 millimeters in that direction. Looking good. And to keep things a little bit more clear, I'm going to just for the moment, turn the visibility of sketch two off. Okay. Now this is the clever trick. We want to copy this sketch and basically paste it onto this one. So you might be forgiven by right clicking and saying, uh, finding sketch one and saying, right click copy, but you'll be fine that when you try and paste it, there is no paste option. Tragic. I know, but what we can do is we can use a trick, go ahead and create a 2d sketch on this work plane too. And aha, this is where you can right click and paste and it will paste dimension for dimension. The same sketch as we created in our first one. The only difference is it's not constrained to the origin. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add in a coincident constraint between the origin and that point there. Beautiful. So remember in CAD laziness is the key. So we'll come along here and we're going to edit the height. So the height of the second member is 150 and its angle is a little more shallow. It's nine degrees. So we'll go ahead and we'll change that angle there to nine degrees. You might notice that this large or oh, the smaller wheel is poking through the bottom. That's okay because when we come to making the frame, this square hollow section at the bottom is going to add some fat to the bottom. Looking good, looking good. So we'll say finish sketch and we'll finish this off by making an offset plane from there. 70 mil again, creating a sketch and using the absolutely wonderful project geometry feature function, I should say function, project geometry of that point, blah, blah, blah. So, so far, there we go. Lovely. Excellent. Good. I'm going to go ahead and hide the work planes. I find that they get very messy very quickly, but show all the sketches. Now, what we want to do is capture one more center point, And that is for these cross members here. And so far, what we've been doing is creating a bunch of 2D sketches. We could create a 2D sketch that happens to capture that and that and another plane that captures that one and that one, but I got a lazy way of doing it. So we'll come along here uh, and change it from 2D sketch to 3D sketch. Here we can come along, click line, and here just connect those points that we created earlier. These are going to represent our cross members. Looking good, looking good. Here we go. Lovely. So at the end of the day, what we have are sketches representing the center lines of our members. Now I've intentionally left the bottom frame out because uh, that'll, that'll come a little bit later when we're doing the frame generator. So we'll go ahead and we're going to save this. We'll save it and we're going to call it uh, bike rack skeleton. You don't need to call it that, but uh, I like to call frame skeletons skeletons. Beautiful. Okay. We'll close that down. And what we're going to do is start a new standard millimeter assembly. And into that assembly, we are going to place our rack. So we'll come along here. Yeah, looking good. Place grounded at origin. Good stuff. Good stuff. And before we continue, I'll save that and I'll call this bike rack. 
Lovely, lovely. Okay, now, before I get started, I want to uh, duplicate the center lines a few times because I can see that there's basically four sets of this double rack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's easy to do that in assembly. What we want to do is we want to pattern that bike rack skeleton in the Z direction. So there we go, Z axis. And we know that the period between these is 740 mil with four of the units. Looking good, looking good. Okay, so it looks a little bit messy at the moment, but trust me, it's gonna pay off. It's gonna pay off big. We'll come along and we'll save it, save early, save often. Uh, come to the design tab. So we've created the center lines of our bike racks. What we want to do next is create the actual um, frame itself. So we'll come along here to insert frame. And this is a wonderful tool that lets you use either the edges of 3D models or sketches, whether they're 2D or 3D, to create some geometry. Now, you can either click parts individually to create the frames, or alternatively, you can use a window selection, which we're going to do. Um, but just before I do, I'll show you that you can create different kinds of frames. So here we've got uh, very standard uh, ISO circular members. So we've got a circular hollow section. We can choose the size, 21.3 by 2. We might, no, no, no 21, that, that'll be fine. We'll say 21.3 by 2.5. Give it a little bit more meat. Um, we can specify the material, so we can choose mild steel. And now let's go ahead and we will choose using the window selection, everything in here. And what it does is Inventor goes off and it tries to find all the lines that it can um, to place in the members. Now, what we can see is it's, it's selected all the lines that we wanted to, but also some that we didn't intend to. So what we can see is this construction line here and this construction line here have picked up on, uh, have accidentally been picked up. So holding down the shift key, we can unselect those construction lines so that that frame member is not created. So we'll come along here, looking good, looking good. Duk, 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 duk. Continuing to be good, wonderful. I think that's all of them, hopefully. Um, if not, we can change it later. And we can come along here and say, okay. And it'll go off and produce those members one by one, populating the skeleton uh, with uh, the frame members that will fit to size. Here we go. Boop, 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 boop. Yes, wonderful, great. Okay, cool. So we've got our skeleton uh, populated with uh, true frame members. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do something for the moment. I'm gonna save it. And I'm going to quickly show you the bill of materials just to highlight uh, a common error that shows up with these, um, with these frames. So it'll just take a moment to save. Excellent. Okay, so once it's finished saving, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, see a common error that shows up with these frames. So if we come to bill of materials, You'll see that in the bill of materials, not only is the frame and all of the members included, but also the sketch on which we created the frame. So that's not very good. What we want to do is we want to change it in the bomb structure to be a reference part. That means that it's not a real component that actually gets manufactured. It's just a fake sketch that we created to, to create the design. So we'll go ahead and make that a reference and close it down. Beautiful. And what I like to do is I like to hide the skeleton on which the, uh, on which the frame is based for clarity. Okay, so imagine that we want to change the size of these cross members just to be a little bit smaller or a little bit different. What we could do is we could come along here and say change. And here, oops, we can select these components. And here, if we wanted to, we could change the size. So we could say it's 21 with a two millimeter wall thickness, if you wanted to, we're not going to do that. Okay, so next what we want to do is we want to make a frame uh, at the bottom here. So I'll go ahead and uh, do, 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 make the skeleton visible again. And this time we're going to take a slightly different approach. We'll say insert frame. And this time we are going to make a, uh, actually a square hollow section. So we'll say square and rectangular tubes, ISO standard, square, and we'll choose 30 by 30 by three. Looking good. But there's a trouble. This time we don't have a sketch line that that goes from this end point here to this end point here. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the mode of placement. By clicking this button here, instead we're choosing two points along which a frame will be created. So we can click the little green plus and it'll make that frame. 
and we can repeat the process for each member here. Say OK. Another one here. And a last one here. Looking good. Well, kind of not looking good, I'll explain. So I'll hide the sketch. And you might be forgiven looking at it from afar. Oh, that looks pretty good. But if you were to come along and do an interference analysis, come to inspect, analyze interference, you'll see when it finishes that we've got a whole load of interferences. That's because there's no end treatments. The members were just created and allowed to interfere with one another. So what we're going to do is a few things. Uh, we are going to move this lower frame so that rather than impinging on the circular section, the circular section is sitting on top. So to do that, come to design, change, and here I'll pick all four of these lower frame members. And using the white dots, reposition it so that it's below that line there. Looking good. Okay, next we can do a mitre. So if you see these corners, they're just impinging on one another. But if we come along here, we can click mitre and clicking all four frame members here, 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 and here. We can make the ends meet like that. It's also possible to include a world gap, but I didn't because I'm lazy. Excellent, good, good, good. Okay, and one last one would be the notches. So with this uh, cross member here, what you'd need to do is trim it relative to uh, the members that it's intersecting. So we can come along here, we can say ch -ch notch, pick this one here, and for these cross members, notch, notch, and there we go. We've got, uh, if you see the blue, we've got uh, the shape notched out. Click OK, and repeat the process on the other side. And so forth. Good, okay, I'm gonna fast forward the video and I'm just going to repeat the process for the other ones. So I'll come along here, notch. Wonderful. And once we've finished doing that, what we can see is if we go into the part, into the assembly, into the frame, we've got the individual units with their end treatments included. Same goes for the mitre, same goes for the trim. So that's how you can create a quick frame in Autodesk Inventor. Before you go, I'll show you one more cool thing. So if you were to come along and change anything, so say for example, we were to change the sketch on which it was based, we could come along here and say for example, edit the skeleton and say that we wanted to make it, uh, I don't know, really tall, we'll say 400. If you change that and update it, what you'll find is that the frame will update instantly. Well, instantly, instantly, instantly. There you go. So it's very, very easy to rework the structure. Cool. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and uh, happy modeling. See you next time. Bye.